What's going on, Ar- North Arlington, Texas? Welcome to episode 102, season six of Talk and Throws Podcast, Texas Style. As always, I'm Coach Jason. And I'm Coach Janelle. And we are Throws Coaches with the Throwing Factory Track Club. Uh, you can go to our, uh, the website, the throwingfactory.com website, and check out our bios. I remind everybody that if you go to that website, you can find links for Fiber Sports, for Four Throws, and for Porta Circle as well. And then also the shopping page where you can buy some really cool apparel, um, maybe for the Christmas holidays coming up in here in a, yeah, in a, here in a few months, so to speak. So we're in the second half. Yeah, we're in the second half of the year. Uh, also, too, you will find. Um, Different divisions of the Thorn Factory. We have West at the Thorn Factory, led, led by Coach Kai. East, led by Coach Jarvis. And then out in Abilene, Texas, uh, Knight, uh, Coach Knight, Knight Power and Performance. Uh, you can go to that website again and con- find their contact information. And everybody, too, about um, our YouTube channel. Uh, you can go on YouTube and search Talking Throws Podcast Texas Style and give us a thumbs up or subscribe to that. And then also, we want to thank our sponsors for Season 6, Texas Track and Field Coaches Association. Uh, Right now, Stuart Cantor just announced that the 2024 Winter Clinic was going to be in Waco, Texas. Uh, The Hall of Fame um, induction night will be at the Texas Sports Hall of Fame there in Waco, right off of the Baylor University campus. Um, and then the following day, the convention's going to be at the Waco Convention Center. Uh, I think those dates are January 5th and 6th of 2024. And then also, if you go to the website, you're going to see the schedule's already popping up uh, for 2024. Texas Relay's already popped up. Uh, the state meet's already been scheduled, and it's actually... Uh, a week earlier on different weekends, so um, be sure you get the right dates for that. Fourthrows.com implements price right. If you go to fourthrows.com right now, you're going to see discounts for javelins, for discus, for shot puts, for hammers. Uh, so that website is fourthrows.com. Use the code TALKINGTHROWS10 to get that 10% off. And we love the Hills and appreciate their support over the, over the last few years. Porta-Circle, Porta-Circle.com, making throwing more accessible. Use the code TALKINGTHOS10 to get that 10% off. Uh, guys, if you need a practice facility and you don't have a throwing ring, this is a great tool to use to get those reps in. You can put this on a concrete, you can put it on a gym floor, you can put it on grass. We have shot put sizes, we have discus, whatever you need. Fiber Sports Discus. That website is FiberSportsDiscus.com. You can get buy your Fiber Sports Discus at Forthos.com or go to the website FiberSportsDiscus.com and Bruce Caldwell will point you in the right direction depending on your location. Uh, if you go to Forthos, use that code talking those 10. Ready Up Athletic Development. Uh, Zach Phillips at 512-507-8347 um, is doing programming as well. So he has a new program out called Basic Throw Strength. You can go to that website, Train Heroic, and search Basic Throw Strength. If you use Throws 10, you're going to get 20% off. So that website, again, is Train Heroic, and that program is designed for a multi-sport athlete who is going from volleyball, basketball, and going into football or even to throwing as well. And then our uh, favorite in print, embroidery, Big big Frogs of Colleyville, uh, that website is Colleville at bigfrogs.com. Today's guest is, we haven't talked to him in a couple, yes. a return guest. We haven't talked to him since May of 2021, but he is basically turned into one of the best throwers, hammer throwers in the country. Uh, he's currently ranked 56th in the, in the world in hammer. Uh, he just came off placing in the top seven at the 2023 U.S. Championships with a mark of 17.29. So far this year, he has a PR of 74.56 in meters. That that was at the Tulsa Elite Classic. Uh, He just got back from Canada as well. Um, He is still the Volunteers Throws Coach at University of Arkansas, but also too, he's running his own training kind of program for private, private coaching. And I know he has an Instagram. You can search throw 
Northwest Arkansas or throw NWA Northwest Arkansas. And I'm sure he would like the follows on that. Please welcome for part two of, of our conversation with Eric Sullins, um, a pride and joy of Arlington Lamar High School. There we go. There you go. What's Good going on, guys? <laughs> you got to. Oh, hell yeah. That's what, that's one reason I want to have you on. So, I, cool. I, you threw today, right? You were to me? Sort of. Yeah, technically. What happened? I, I threw about 70. Oh. I'm tr- I'm trashed. It's been it's been a hard three weeks. Uh, for sure. I was we, USA's we were, Canada, Canada, and then one one practice going into this week. I just I wasn't quite all there. Yeah. Yeah. You've had I th- oh, look from my counts over 12 meets. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since if you, since if you say it like that, then it like, feels yeah. like it. So on your world ranking athletic profile they there's only 12 listed that doesn't count going to oklahoma or anything like that there's 12 no so it'd be 13 counting this one not counting this one be 13 so yeah well cool well well, we're not gonna keep you long Uh, we can talk as long as you want (laughs) well good i I may have to get up and leave and y'all can talk a lot (laughs) no stay and ask questions so man thanks for being on Man, you've had a great 2023 season. Uh, you are a legit professional hammer thrower. You got a sponsorship with Velasa. Talk to us how that came about and what does that sponsorship mean to you? Oh, man. Well, first off, it means a lot. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a little while. Y'all have had me on the podcast before. Thank you for having me on again. Yeah. Um, there's kind of this, this, this strange... Um, feeling being an unattached thrower so often and like we're not all bringing home millions of dollars and getting all kinds of brand deals and stuff so it's it's not a financial thing it's more like representing something bigger than just kind of being a guy or a girl that wants to throw post collegiately once you kind of get that name next to your name it 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 starts to kind of elevate and change the way you start to look at the way you prepare and the way you approach things mentally um, so yeah, being with Velasa has really changed my perspective, kind of dragging myself out to practice going before, before I was with them, just like, you know, doing it for me, doing it for my coach, doing it for my family. But once you tack on, okay, like I'm with a club now, this is a little bit, um, it's a little bit bigger. It's no added pressure, but it, it means more if that makes sense and making a few bucks on the side doesn't hurt, but, um, yeah, it's been fun. That went about kind of after. Well, I threw well this year. <laughs> yeah. I've always been a decent thrower, just kind of a guy under the radar. Um, but, yeah, kind of opened up a can this year and went 74.50. And after that, reached out to them, of course, and, and got that ball rolling. So, yeah, it's been it's been a good, wonderful ride. I'm excited to be with them next year and uh, continue to grow that relationship and all the above. What do you uh what what shoes are you wearing if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I'm I'm like throwing shoes. Yeah, they're velocity. Yeah, um, I have the their throwing shoes, um, the black ones with the camo. Um, oh, the stones. I ha- because I yes, the stones. Sorry, I haven't had a chance to throw in them yet because I signed with them the week before USA's, and then that week I went to Oregon, and that week after that I went straight to Canada. And then I had one session and then went to Tulsa. So it's been a kind of a whirlwind. I'll be probably throwing in them all summer. Nice. Getting nice. used to those. But you just need you need a few practices and a new pair of shoes before you get used to oh, yeah. that breaking different amount stuff. of friction and breaking them in. Yeah. So I'm excited to test them out and let some hammers fly with those on. Cool. Now, now do you get some of their lifting shoes and well and some of that apparel as well? Yeah, I've got the loons, which are like their trainers, and their strakes, which are the wooden wooden heel weightlifting shoes, plus apparel and uh, some hammers. Hopefully, um, kind of build a little arsenal of hammers. Wow! During my time with them, I hope so. Okay, so first, tell what's your, th- what's your feedback on the sh- the, li- the platform shoes, the lifting shoes? Oh, they're sweet. I love the feeling of that uh, the wood heel. Yeah, it's it's. You ha- you'd have to wear both 
a plastic heel like a Romelio yeah. and uh, or like an Addy Boost or whatever those Adidas ones are, uh -huh. Addy lifters, and then go to a wood. The wood has a different like shock absorption. Yeah, I really like the way they feel. Um, they're solid. They're durable. They look cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And looking cool is what matters. <laughs> that's really, I mean, at the end of the day, that's all we're really thinking about. I mean, it is to some kids. But yeah. yeah. Now, do you, do you yeah. have you have you got a hold of the tennis shoes yet? The like they're. Yeah, I got them. Um, I've been wearing them all day. I got them right here. Oh, they're sweet. Okay. I just took them off. I can smell yeah. my feet because I've been <laughs> throwing and driving all day. <laughs> yeah. One thing you can tell your higher ups, they need to make a little wider for us fat guys. The uh the the tennis shoes. Yes, I I bought a pair. I was all excited, and dude, and you must hey. have some wide feet because I was thinking <laughs> these were pretty good. I'm not a small man. <laughs> yeah, they were they were not comfortable on my feet. I had to send them back. I was heartbroken, so I was like, I'm gonna be sporting these shoes. I'm gonna look cool in them. I put them on within five. Now, no disrespect to the velocity, just for, that's my fat feet. That uh, that you gotta feet. you gotta look out for the big boys. Yes, exactly. Yeah, what I do like about to, these is they're, they've got a little more side support, and maybe that's what you're running into. With the Nike, you kind of got more cloth around the top. Yeah. So if you got a fat foot, it's going to kind of wrap around yes. that sole a little bit. These probably don't have as much give. Gotcha. That's what I'm thinking. But, uh, yeah, I've enjoyed them. Cool. And I've cool. beaten the crap out of them. I've only had them for three, four weeks. <laughs> cool. Cool. Now you said hammer too. So are you throwing the Velasa hammer already? Or are you still sticking to what you used in the past? Uh, yeah. I, so they sent me a training hammer that, okay. that I've, that I've put to good use. And, um, but I've got a competition hammer. That's a tungsten ball. That, okay. Got gotcha. That's a little gotcha. bit that I like the feeling of that I'm used to. Gotcha. So are there's any promos? Like if someone, you know, goes on there's promo code you're using to get you some extra tips and, and oh, yeah. pick back and uh, stuff. Er what is that? Eric, it's Eric 15. Eric 15. percent off. And, um, yeah, any apparel, any shoes. Big, big, a big thing that they do is, is provide implements. So if you're looking for hammers, discs, shots, indoor weights, indoor shots, javelins, I think they've got a barbell too. I just saw that on the website the other day. Oh wow! I'm okay. gonna try to get my hands on one of those. For sure, for yeah. sure. Eric, fifteen. All right, we'll put that in. I see eight, right? Yes. Right. Make sure you yes. Got that out. Gotcha. Put that out there for you. Well, dude. Awesome. Man, let, first off, let's talk about what went on down in Oregon. Top seven. I like I like the use of top seven instead of top eight. <laughs> yeah, dude, this ain't my first rodeo. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you look good. <laughs> if I get six, it's top six. If I get fifth, it's top five. <laughs> well, all right. Well, let let me preference this, and let's set it up really pretty. You were yeah. top five coming in out of the prelim, right? Oh man, that I mean, it does sound pretty, but then you realize I fell two spots. But yeah, no, yeah, no, completely right. well. I'm happy with it. I, I improved going into the finals, so I I fought the good fight. I did as best I could. I can't control at the end of the day where other guys are putting out into the field. All I can really do is my best. So uh, I'm really happy with it. You know, 72-29, I believe yeah. it was. Um, of course, like anybody would ever say, I think I had a lot more in the tank. And if you follow me and you saw those throws, they didn't really look all that pretty. I think I was moving the ball really well and I was being aggressive and committing to turns three and four. But kind of my axis was off. So when I got through that finish, I was just blowing off that hammer. I think it had the ball speed and the potential to go 74, 75, 76. I can't really predict that. That's all hearsay and woulda, coulda, shoulda. But, like, of course, yeah, I think the best I've done at a U.S. championship was 14th place so yeah. far. So I, I made up some good ground this year. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just, just more fuel for the fire for next season. Um, you, getting in better shape, getting in better technical condition. Yeah, and I was going to like, do you say you were going into that meet with the expectations of of now placing, you know, higher versus may of what you've done in the past? Yeah, yeah. This was kind of the year of like, I don't like realization, I guess is kind of the word that comes to mind. Like, like I said earlier, just I've kind of always been a guy that showed up and was there, uh -huh. but knowing that I could be on that leaderboard 
albeit I wish I could get a little higher, and I think I will in the future. I'm um, having a lot of fun with the sport. I want to keep going. And um, but yeah, like making that shift of, you know, and this is through conversations with my coach, conversations with my family, conversations with my training partner, like no one, like I'm one of the guys, like there's no reason why I don't belong on that stage and going out and putting out a throw that represents a little bit more of what I do and off like outside of the meets and yeah, just trying to have fun with it. <laughs> 72 29 is a good throw. I don't want to downplay that. I'm really happy with that. There were times in my life where I probably never imagined throwing that far. And now I'm kind of disappointed with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Sal, though, this, this is a cruel sport, the way it exploits people like me that just want to be better. <laughs> yeah. Keeps just, pulling you back in. The bar keeps rising. Every, rising. It doesn't matter. It's, it, it doesn't matter if you sell 80 meters. It's next is 81. I mean. So, so when did the mind shift for you happened where you kind of said i'm one of the guys and you referenced conversation with your training partner your coach your family it was there a timeline when that switch kind of happened and said i belong here now i'm gonna kiss your ass versus okay i just hope i you know represent myself well yeah i, I think it's kind of like it was it's not black and white it's not like one day i just woke up and went ah yes i'm good at this i remember <laughs> I mean, it was a long road. I mean, in 2021, I had I had a I had a good throw. I threw 72.10, but yeah, um, it was one of those throws where you you throw you make a big leap. I went from like 67 to 72 in one day, and I it was a lot of adrenaline that fueled that. It was of course a lot of prep and a lot of technical work, but it it was almost like I didn't really know how I got it to go that far just yet. You know, something clicked in the throw that hadn't clicked yet, and it clicked on the right time and the right day, and the ball went a long way. And it took me 25 months to throw further than that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although, like, last season, so 2022, I would say was one of my better training years. I had practice throws well beyond that, and a lot of light balls and a lot of heavy balls that indicated I was going to go much, much further than that. And... um I just never really got it through on the day. And part of that is kind of the self-belief, self like self-doubt kind of creeping in that I talked about. But yeah, um, it kind of started to shift. So I got a new coach this year, John, John Newell from the University okay. of Tennessee, formerly a volunteer, now a Razorback. Yes. Um, <laughs> and he he played a big role in kind of like, you know, we we never have any like like cut and dry discussions like hey, you're the guy, you're the guy, like you're going to do this, you're going to do that. It's just every day kind of chipping away at small goals. And um, he did a lot to kind of, I'd say, like revamp my technique a lot. We, we had a hard, long fall together, and I'm super grateful to him. Basically, like he, he came to university and said, like, the way it started out was he said, I want to keep my hammer and knife sharp in my mind, like, if it's just me coming out to practice and helping you shag hammers, I'll do that. But if you want to coach, we'll work into that and see kind of what, what we can do to help you out. And, you know, you never asked anything for me other than I guess working hard and showing up on time. And it took maybe one session with him before I realized like, Oh crap, we're going to make some changes. Okay. Um, he would ask questions like, what are you thinking about during this part of the throw? Like what, what's your thought process on that? Yeah. And then my response was something to the effect of like, I don't think about that. And he said, well, you're going to think about that now. And we're going to, we're going to work on that because that part sucks. <laughs> 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 and then, and like your throw, like I've been doing this for so long. Like I worked with Dave Ryer, he, yeah. who you guys know, who's credit to him, one of the best throwing minds. And just unfortunate that we're not in the same town. And we had to yeah. work remotely. I made a ton of advancement with him. I still am a big fan of him. Um, but John came in and he's right there in front of me telling me, okay, like, this is how you get the ball to pass through second term, this and that. Like, it was really fun and it was really refreshing to kind of like be carrying the weight of like my technique, so to speak, for so many years. And then to have someone say like, hey, buddy, you're doing great, but like, this could be better um, was huge. And, and so we just chipped away. And, you know, I had a lot of really rough practices for a long time in the fall. I think he got here in August. And Did you know first, him before 
I'm sorry. Did you know him before he came to Arkansas? Did yeah. Did y'all have a relationship? A little bit. Yeah. Like, okay. okay. A kind of a professional respect. Like, he was at the University of Tennessee. I'm at Arkansas. I was always a huge fan of his group. Yeah. Um, he had some studs come through there, yeah. man. Like, Seth Whitener, um, Tavis, um, Cassie Wortman, just so many, like, absolute studs. And I always saw, like, the orange and white come into Arkansas, and they'd have, like, 10 guys and girls coming as this squad. And I'm over there, like, checking in my weight by myself, like, man, I wish I had a group like that. <laughs> And like it was always in the back of my head. The transfer portal wasn't really a thing. It wasn't a thing literally yeah. when I was in school. But if I had the the gall to to go to another school, it would have been Tennessee, I think, to because I respected them so much. And being around them so much, whether it be in Arkansas and Fayetteville and Baton Rouge or Palo Alto, like kind of like always had my ear kind of pointed towards them, listening to what they're talking about and what their technical philosophy is. And that comes from Newell. I mean, he's the guy that sets that culture and sets that technical expectation. So it was just an alignment of the stars, I guess, that he ended up in my lap in Fayetteville. I didn't even have to go anywhere. I got Ryan Krauser and John Newell (laughs) moved to me (laughs) in a three year period. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. But God Um, has blessed you, my friend. God has blessed you for sure. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Uh, Fay- I, Fayetteville, I put- Fayetteville is a magnet for, for getting these throws geniuses, I guess. Oh, yeah, it is. Awesome. We should th- you should change it to throws, Throwville, Throwsville, Arkansas. Oh, no. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, so you talked about having some really rough practices with some of those changes. What would you, what, did, how do you handle that? Let's, like a day of practice where Eric is having to learn something new because we have, you know, just so many kids who have, there, there's always something to learn, right? I mean, you're a yeah. professional thrower and here you are making changes. So how would, how do you handle those changes when you say chipping away a little at a time? Cause what, 25 months until you saw a big progress. So mentally, how do you handle that in a practice? I guess, like what advice would you give a thrower who's trying to work through that? Well, yeah, it was, it was, it was hard for sure. Like anything it's, 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 if you change anything that you're, you hold so dearly to yourself, no matter what aspect of life it is, whether it's just getting out of bed earlier in the morning than you're used to, like, it's going to be tough, but like the throw, like I said, is like, it's the way your brain operates. It's something you've built in your head that you enact physically. And to make changes with that, it's like learning how to ride a, a bike, like all over again. Like, I guess that's a horrible metaphor, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, you're reworking the circuitry in your brain and it's really frustrating. Um, like I said, I, I went a whole year without a PR and yeah. going into the year knowing like, okay, like I have to make changes. And I think that's the mindset is like, of course you can get more physical, you can grow, you can get taller, you can get faster, you can get stronger. Um, but to make changes, you physically have to make changes. And so like there, there are certain cues that you can use that it's like, oh, like just keep your shoulders level, boom, you threw three meters further. But some changes have to really take time to to work like work into your circuitry, like I said. It was just finding something to to leave every practice, good or bad, that I felt like was a like a win. If it was just simple as like, I really nailed my first wind, good. Like that's better than you did a month ago. So take that with you and next practice work on getting two lines down. Like um, maybe it's something like I threw the, I threw a two turn drill a meter further than last week. Like that could be something, but yeah, it's not always just how far did you throw your four turn full throw, full intensity. Cause not every day is going to be like that. Frankly, like PRs come months apart sometimes like it's a sport of very delayed gratification so you have to find ways to find progress and if it's a shot or the disc it's the same way it's like you know my stand throws were kind of crappy today but my wheels felt really good my half turn went about six inches further than it did last Monday good win all right take that move on to the next practice and kind of like continue to like develop that that bank of improvement and like 
not every day, you, like some days you may leave feeling like, man, I didn't do anything right today. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do, I don't know how to throw. I don't know what this is anymore. I don't want to do this anymore, whatever it is. But even that you're learning something because you know, like you can think about, okay, like this is what the throw looked like. I know that's bad. So just that understanding through that learning process, you have then gotten better because you can see like, oh, like I'm picking up my foot early, whatever, whatever it may be. I'm, so I'm leaning to the left. I'm leaning to the right. You now so, know, okay, don't do that anymore. So yeah, just chipping away and chipping away at those small goals, turn into big, goal, big goals, big improvements at the end of the year. And I know we're talking about the current, Eric, but so take that. Would you have had that mentality in high school? To be patient no. enough to chip no. away and to, under, okay, and no, to understand what it took. Yeah, I guess that's kind of my point that I want to help yeah. kids realize is that you have to chip away at stuff, right, all the time in yeah. high school. Like, well, I throw far anyway. I'm, well, that's awesome. But, right, when do you think you got that mentality, college or like this year? <laughs> it was it was probably around my junior or senior year of college that that kind of started to make sense. I mean, I was a bit of an immature thrower in high school. Like my idea of like getting the discus to go further was just throw it harder, more or less of like, Oh, I'm not throwing it hard enough today, or I'm not spinning fast enough. Like what are yeah. like, so, like huge, like not the right way of looking at it, but just like maturing over time and developing, like, being around the right people and having the right conversations and realizing like, okay, maybe the way I approach this mentally isn't the healthiest way of doing this. Um, yeah. It just takes, takes time. I mean, when you're a high school kid, it, I can't tell you how many days I'd go out and have a bad day and I just keep throwing it harder and harder and harder. And I end up taking like the plan was to take 16 throws and I end up taking 30 and the sun's going down just cause I'm frustrated and, bashing my head against the fence trying to figure out why I won't go anywhere when it's not <laughs> it's not the right way to do that at yeah. all yeah <laughs> yeah for sure that's good now yeah. question you said something about measuring are you measuring every throw in practice now no no oh, not okay. really yeah, I kind of eyeball it I'm not really one of those guys that's got an excel file with every throw I've ever done okay. the week and the day that I did it and the day in the block and the how much I slept the night before and what I ate like you get a little too far deep in the rabbit hole, you start to lose track of things and you get too dependent on certain variables when at the end of the day, like you're not going to have control of everything when you're traveling for a meet. So yeah, you don't want to be too caught up in the circuitry of what makes a perfect throw when you just really need to think about what makes it feel good and move smoothly. Um, like, of course, I'm measuring. I've got lines on the field, but it's yeah. a little uphill. You can't really tell exactly where it is. Um, but I know my PR is basically like if I have a really good day, I'll pull the tape on it. Okay. But most days I'm kind of throwing for a range and I just kind of try to stick in that range. If that and makes I'll, sense. I also want to tell our listeners, too, that I've seen you on social media. You're throwing on a side of a javelin runway, right? That's correct. <laughs> Yeah. So, so you're not using the Arkansas facilities every day. You're out where nobody's watching in a javelin runway, and not a hammer cage grinding. No, that's right. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of the matter of being here. Um, I think, I think the coaching staff would like me to train inside the cage at the track on campus, but it's used by so many athletes, the field specifically in the way the cage is, kind of pointed mm -hmm. if you throw one to two feet foul right sector you're throwing it on mondo oh. and you know it's going to bounce and hit the building next door like it's yeah. it's not the safest place to throw in the world and also you got to keep account of the hundred plus athletes that warm up on the grass i don't care about the grass personally i'd love to destroy it but i gotta look out for all those other people um, I have trained there in the past, but I'm not trying to burn any bridges and destroy a facility. For sure. <laughs> and they're kind enough to let me stick around. We've got an off-campus ring with a jab runway and a cage um, that are kind of parallel. And where the cage is set up, um, it was built a long time ago. Probably, it's probably 30, 
plus years old. And if you throw roughly 71 meters or above, you hit a set of power lines. So that became a big issue last year where we kind of had to modify the ball program to fit around that. So it's throwing, throwing a lot more heavy ball. Um, and then when I got to light stuff, I, I weaseled my way into the track and threw some light ball at the track, but it wasn't very often. And this year, I mean, we got that Jive runway parallel to it. It's like a four foot wide strip of concrete. So I just scooted back and over to the left and I throw off of that. And over there I can throw, I think like 80, 84 or 85 okay. without hitting those power lines. Gotcha. So, like, so you ain't gotta be fancy. Fayette. That's, that's what I'm saying. It ain't gotta be all flashy. Yeah, if the, electricity goes out in Fayetteville, we know Solon's hit the power lines. <laughs> no, you, you didn't hear that from me. Hey, you, I know. I was thinking. All right, you measured it. I hit the I hit the power lines at 71 meters. <laughs> yeah. Now, is that cage a, a a discus shot put cage? You know, the double cage. No, it's not a combo. It's just oh, it's, uh, it's an old school discus cage with a net that's torn to pieces. Oh, uh, okay. Um, it's not super wide, so if you throw a little right, you're gonna clip the net on the way out. I mean, it's not set up for hammer. I you know, like I like one. For reference, when I got to Fayetteville in 2014, the school record was 160 feet. So I don't think there was a soul on earth that thought that one day there'd be a guy there throwing 230, 240. Yeah. Um. So happy with where I'm at. Make do with the facilities that I've got. Oh, yeah. Hopefully can, you know, as the throwing program there, you know, develops and grows that they'll pour a little money into it and find a place where we can throw. Not even to just pass myself for the guys and girls on the team yeah. to uh, have a facility that's held to the same standard. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it, like I said, you don't got to be flashy with it. You need some concrete. And some real estate. That's that's yeah, pretty much it. Land. So, are you still helping coaching the team? And is that are you still volunteering? Because I know Ryan's still kind of doing the same thing. Are y'all still yeah. helping him out? I mean, I'm around. I'm like a morale coach. I just kind of like make friends with everybody and gotcha. make sure they're make sure they know they look good and they're throwing well. I don't coach them. Um, Roger and Jordan are coached by Newell. Um, occasionally. Um, Ryan would come around and check out their practices and give them a little tip and say like, Hey, like, what do you feel here? Maybe try to feel it like this. Um, so he's, he's more of like a helper than, than I've been. Newell handles all that. I mean, he's, he's a legend. Yeah. Um, Ryan just kind of pokes in with some, some thoughts now and then he's done a really good job. I mean, Roger threw 20 meters in the shot this year, I mean, <laughs> yes. 68 in the discus. Newell will handle all the discus, but for the shot, I mean, Roger took a lot. I mean, you can probably watch Roger throw and think that looks a lot like Krauser. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, and West had a good year as well. Jordan did both of them PR'd. I mean, we got school records in the indoor outdoor shot and the discus this year. That's pretty, wow. pretty special in a program where there hasn't been a whole lot of throwing lately but back in the 80s was a mean team i mean the yeah. school discus the discus school record was 63 and the shot school record was like 2050 i mean that's nothing to shake stick out that's pretty good um yeah it's not quite as good as the hammer at 160 but <laughs> is he bringing <laughs> thankfully some more i had plenty of time to looking that. To recruit and kind of establish better a, more of a you know more a bigger squad yeah, I mean, I'm not in the office ever. I mean, that's okay. that's up to them in the war room to decide where where they're trying to go as far as athletes coming in gotcha. on the roster. Yeah, gotcha. I hope so. I want Arkansas to dominate. Oh, for sure, for yeah. sure. So let's talk a little technique wise, because you know I've noticed just watching your film. There's there's changes maybe coming out of the back. I don't have the eye or expertise that you do. But what is some of the stuff when he sat down with you and said, "Hey, we need to change this," and you said, "Well, I don't think about that." What was those cues and sort of kind of ed educate us on what you're doing now that's a little bit different than what you were doing, you know, last year, the year before? Yeah, I think uh, I was on the right track. In the past couple of years, I think I did a really good job of, I, I don't know if the camera's flipped, but like basically everything from zero to my left um, through, through 180 on this side, I really got down um, working the ball through the pendulum, learning how that set up 
feels like like the concept of setting the hammer up as kind of a system instead mm-hmm. of like this jagged like bits and pieces stitched together like all one big movement um but my problem was when i when i would catch the first turn pretty much it's hard to do from an office chair but i basically would drop my torso and my hands a bit so as the ball started to catch up and get back in front of me i would pull my shoulder up and open up this way instead yeah. of staying level and working it all the way around and keeping kind of a like if you look at the high point behind me and the low point in front of me, mm-hmm. you want it to be kind of symmetrical here and here. And I was kind of like this. So like big entry, high point, right sector, and it would drop and I would pull it through too. And from that point on, I'm kind of pulling it. Yeah. It, it's slight. It's, it's, it takes kind of a trained eye, but like when you really see it, you're like, oh crap, he's not really like utilizing the ball. He's just kind of bringing it with him. And so Newell's big thing was kind of learning to like let the ball pick up my right foot rather than picking up the foot early and pulling it in, like letting the ball go by. And so once that's accomplished, that's going to keep the, I guess, if you're looking at the back of the throw from the back, Mm -hmm. it'd be like the left side, like 270. It'll keep the ball a little higher so it can swing in front of me instead of dropping and swinging to my right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And so I was, my posture used to be a little bit kind of like this. And now it's a lot more up here. Like I'm, I'm swinging the ball in front of me, like used to think more like Litvinov and like Dev Yatovsky for the hammer nerds out there. Uh-huh. But now I'm a little more like Tikon, Nick Miller, Rudy esque, like a little okay. more upright. It's a little simpler, less room for error. And I think bigger for a better for a big guy like me, I'm 6'3", 275. And it's, it's hard and it's hard on your back. If you're dragging the ball and you're kind of pikey, I think that's, I mean, if you're pushing and like being patient and like keeping the ball high and swinging it and you're a little pikey, you can access a lot more radius, Mm -hmm. but there's a lot more room for error. And when the error happens, it all blows back on you and you get some injuries. So I was getting some injuries piled up like that and being a little bit more, I don't want to say stiff. It's not the right word, but keeping a little more posture, postural yeah. integrity has helped me stay healthy a little bit. And I feel like it's freed the ball up quite a bit. When you talk about in the hammer, like freeing up the ball, freeing up the ball. I was doing a great job of that before doing that early in the throw, but by three and four, I'd be so heavy on my right foot that I'd have to pull it back into the, into the like through zero into the high point again. Yeah. And that's my fault. I mean, that's nothing my coach was preaching. I mean, that's just force of habit, I guess. Um, But Newell kind of like bringing my posture up some allows me to kind of see the ball through zero a little easier and keep the hands high. So that was a lot of changes. Um, The throw feels completely different now than it did. It feels completely different and completely identical it's very strange like yeah i know the feeling of a 72 plus throw like is is the same but like just my body's in a different position so it took a long time to kind of lock that in yeah and and like you asked earlier like when did i kind of feel like when did you feel like you kind of belonged when were you did you feel like you got that confidence in you was well indoor season i threw the weight 70 something 77 some odd feet uh, 2350. Of course, I was happy with that. But I came off indoor season and I got on an 18 pound hammer and I threw that 70 meters. Oh, and wow. that was like, holy cow. <laughs> yeah. That's a big throw. Like I knew my kind of spread from 18 to 16 because I've been throwing for so long and talking to other guys kind of what that spread looks like for them. And I was like, dude, you are in the mix now. Welcome, buddy. You did it. Now just yeah. throw the light ball for it. So, yeah, so I guess technically speaking, we made some some changes. I mean, it's I think for better or worse, it's always good to kind of experiment with with new things and don't be too locked in. The last thing I want to do as a thrower, and you kind of kind of be careful with how much information you take in, but the last thing I wanted to do was think like it's this way and no other way works, like my way or the highway kind of mentality, like. I wanted to be open to these new ideas. I had this opportunity to work with 
with Newell, and I knew he had a, a lot of great throwers, Sam Scorvellis, um, Yorgos, Korkaitis, Seth Whitener, like great hammer throwers that I think no, no, no diss to them. I mean, to Yorgos or Seth, but like, I think I'm a lot more physical and bigger physically yeah. and a little longer in the torso and in the arms. So I thought like my general thought was like, okay, if I can throw like Newell's guys throw and they throw X distance, I'm this much bigger and stronger, like mm -hmm. could potentially mean more distance. And that, yeah, it worked out. I mean, 374, yeah, 50, I don't think I got everything out of that throw. I'm not like sitting here saying 7450. I'm good. I'm time to hang it up. <laughs> I've I've done all I can do. I left Tucson thinking, man, if I'd have just let the ball pass a little more on the entry, I could have thrown 75 or 75. Yeah. It was it wasn't like that's the most I could have ever gotten out of that throw. It was like, dang, I'm in really good shape and I'm close, but I'm not quite there. So still much to learn, still like physically and getting myself prepped a little better next year and, and mentally approaching the technical aspect um, with even more um, focus um, could learn, could turn in some good stuff. Cause I think about this year kind of in retrospect. Um, you know, I spent four some odd months this fall, like relearning. And uh -huh. now I think I've got a good hang of it. So I can use that four months to progress instead of like catching up, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, great point. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see what happens next year. I'm, I'm pumped. Um, yeah. I'm healthy. I've got a good, good mental outlook on next year. I'm, I'm excited. I'm anxious to get going. I think. So how much, you said 275. So how much have you gained? And let's start getting into that, your training program. Cause I'm seeing you move some heavy weight. Last time I saw you, you were kind of on the leaner side. So if you're 275, yeah. seeing you on video, dude, you're getting thick, man. <laughs> yeah. What's going on in the weight room? How many calories are you eating today? <laughs> uh, it's a, it's, it's a, like people like to really hone in on what's the perfect body weight for me as a thrower. Like I talk to guys all the time and it's like, they're like, Oh, if I can be 262, that's, perfect and that's my that's what's when i know i can throw the furthest so i'm like man like how do you know that you've only got think about like the last like at our level you've got three four five years of experience throwing these distances like that's only four five data points you have i mean there's no way you can really know exactly the perfect body weight i found i'm a lot stronger over 270 um that's where I threw out in 2021 and in 2022, I leaned out a little bit, got to like 265. I think on the top end, I think a lot of the season I was throwing in the low 260s. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to see again, like, okay, I know I threw well at 270 plus. I think the biggest I got this season, I, I scraped like 280 for a few weeks. Oh, really? Okay. Um, about a month ago. But um, yeah, I'm eating a lot. That's for sure. And I'm lifting heavy. Um, it's hard to, I mean, we would take hours upon hours to talk about my training program and what kind of Ryan has. So are you lifting done. four days a week? Let's simplify. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm lifting four days a week. I do two lower body days. Well, I kind of like it's technically five, but two of them are half days. Okay. Um, and I'm in the like, weight room five times. A week. Uh, it'd be after it's oh, almost after always after. Yeah. So I do two lower bodies a week and those are usually paired with Olympic lifts. And then I do an upper body press and pull day. And then I do two like hammer specific days where okay. I'm doing like twists. I'm like, I'm spending 45 minutes doing like twists and lunge twists and barbell twists and abs and low back extensions and heavy winds with heavy hammer chains, chain hammers with like weights attached to them. Yeah. You're just trying to really beef up the, the core. Yeah. Um, I'll never have a six pack, <laughs> but <laughs> I think uh, I've got, quite a bit of muscle through that midsection yeah. uh, that I built this year. But that was a big, sh that was a shift we did this year is putting in the special strength days. Cause it used to be two lower body Olympic pull days yeah. and then two pull push days, kind of like bench and pull-ups and rows, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So we took out one of those upper body, like shot putter type workouts and yeah. split it into two uh, 
more hammer hammery boy type of days. Gotcha. Gotcha. I like it. Makes gotcha. the makes the hammer feel really light. It's helped with keeping me healthy because I'm doing stuff on both sides now. You got where yeah. you kind of get trapped as, as any thrower does. If you're a right-handed thrower, you spend half your week turning left. You're just gonna you're really gonna work one side of your body and neglect the other one. Um, so that was a big part of what in college, and I, I wish I would, that's like my one, I don't want to regret, but that's one thing I wish I knew more of when you're throwing like all the time and you're not used to that as a high school kid. Maybe you go out a couple times a week in high school, take 15 throws, hang it up and go have dinner in college. I mean, you're throwing constantly. So you're working your body really hard in one direction. You got to do both sides. And on a macro level, that's kind of not detrimental, but it's really harmful for your like spine and your hips and your glutes mm -hmm. and your knees and your ankles. Like you start to feel it after you do that for a few years. Yeah. And I started getting low back injuries. I had a hip injury. I, knees were sometimes bothering me. And um, not that it, not that I'm healthy all the time, knock on wood. I mean, I still get dinged up, but um, it's helped quite a bit to, to have that time that I spend left and right doing both sides. Gotcha. So are y'all doing, cause I've seen you post, you like snatch presses. Are y'all doing those every week with, you know, with front squats? <laughs> Just about. Okay. Ryan's program is very, it's, it's complicated, but it's not, it's, 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 there are a few exercises we keep in pretty much year round. Um, one is a snatch variation. We got, of course, got a front squat, back squat. So yeah, Mondays is usually a snatch variation with front squat. We found um, kind of just by playing around with some velocity testing. Yeah. That of course you got like so many variations of snatch. You can snatch from the floor. You got hang snatch, hip snatch, muscle snatch, close grip snatch, split snatch. There's so many ways to do it. And we kind of played around with it one day when we had a down week and we were seeing like, okay, what do we get the fastest bar speed from? Not necessarily just the fastest bar speed, but the highest power output, mm -hmm. from, which is you know like velocity times mass. Um, with the out of the formula, something math wise, I don't really know, but we got the best wattage on our snatch pulls out of a muscle snatch, which is like the the triple extension pull, and you never break off of it. You never lift yeah. your feet off the ground. You pull it as high as you can and then press it out. And that, that, that feeling of completing the pull all the way through um, seemed to uh, really blow up our wattage. And that's what, as throwers, we're power athletes at the end of the day. And there are a lot of people out there that are a lot smarter than me about talking about this kind of stuff. But just through anecdotal gym bro stuff, I've come to learn quite a bit out of it. And, uh, yeah, anything you can do that's going to increase your power is – yeah probably beneficial and that's what we try to do so yeah we muscle snatched a ton it was fun yeah that was that was one exercise that really went up this year i think i added like it was like it's not an exercise i've done a lot so it was easy to see improvement so that in and of itself is fun because i'm 27 and i'm finding an exercise that i can add 15 kilos to like that's worth doing in and of itself so that was that was a good time yeah so we're, we're snatching and that was a really long way of saying, yes, we do snatch and front squat on Monday. <laughs> it was a great answer. Good. So yeah. on the, on the, on the twist and stuff, the trunk rotations, are y'all doing like medicine ball sitting down or like bar twist and stuff like that? Yeah. All, yeah, all kinds. I mean, okay. I set kind of an outline in my head of what I want to get done during the day. Like, so I do it what, Wednesdays and Saturdays midweek, I'm usually pretty trashed um, physically. So I treat that more of like a higher volume type of day. So I'm gotcha. doing more reps. And then at the end of the week, when I've got the day off afterward, I'll maybe do a heavier variation. So yeah, like grabbing, grabbing plates, pinching them together, twisting, like having Ryan throw me a med ball from the left and I catch it and throw it back to him, things like that. I mean, there are just tons of things we've played with payoff presses with bands, like changing the way our feet are positioned, 
uh, like the American twist that Ryan coined uh, yeah. last year. Um, barbell rotations. I mean, you can really play around with a lot of stuff. If you feel like your feet are dug into the ground um, and you can twist with something heavy, that's some, probably beneficial for Thor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, that's amazing. Y'all get to kind of just go brainstorm it wow. and kind of create, you know, fun. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Credit to Ryan. I mean, I mean he'll, what does this do? What does yeah. this muscle does this work with? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, like we're doing it with our feet parallel to each other. What if we get into a split stance? Where do we feel that? And like, yeah. Oh, like, wait a minute. That's kind of like for Ryan, he's a shot putter out of the back. He's, he's yeah. pushing off his left. Like if I can bring my right foot, my left foot back and I can twist and be able to absorb that and return it whoa that feels kind of like out of the back of the shot so let's let's do that so kind of just playing with new stuff yeah he's a he's a smart cat he knows how to um you know listen to his body and 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 write programs he's been doing this for for quite a long time taking just absurd amounts of notes being able to go back and find like okay like i did this exercise a year ago like what did i write down about it did i like it did i make any modifications to it and that's how he can just continue to progress and progress and progress. He's not ever like throwing darts at a wall thinking, what should I do for the next four weeks? Like, yeah. I don't know. He's mistakes. like, got it. He's got it written down. Yeah. So is, is like the next step, because we're coming into the fall. Do you have any more meat? Are you going to take a break? Because, you know, 2024, the Olympics, the trials, big marks. When do you start yeah, saying we changed yeah. the program going into this like, to get this? I feel like the Olympic trials just happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was definitely last fall. Like you can't yeah. tell me that was two years yeah. ago. Um yeah, it's been a long off season. I think I'm about ready to shut it down. We've talked about maybe like doing like continue to so I set up kind of in the periodization calendar, I set up a peak for USA's clearly and about three weeks out from that started to taper down and just like ease up in the weight room still kind of putting myself under some kind of volume and cns activation but not like taking it to the well yeah. so to speak and so pig for usas felt really great um and after that got invited to go to canada so i went to canada for for a couple of days and that kind of screwed up the week because I could only lift one time. And then I got back from Canada. I got a little sick Monday, Tuesday, so I didn't get to lift. I didn't throw till Wednesday. I threw, I, I, yeah, I threw Wednesday. I lifted Thursday and then I went to another meet in Tulsa. So it was just kind of bam, bam, bam. Yeah. And add all of that on to, I started my off season last year, like July 14th. So it's been over a year that I've been, Going throwing on. and lifting six days a week. I think it's about time I take a little break. Yeah. Um, but we've talked about, and, you know, I, I've, I'm just getting back from Tulsa for the listeners. I, I, I competed today. We, there are some meets that are at the end of August. I don't know if I can hang on till then, but we've talked about continuing to throw like a light hammer for two to three more weeks, just a few yeah. times a week. Okay. And really digging into like, what does it feel like? to totally relax under a throw and kind of play with that feeling of like, sure, I'm not as strong as I was a month ago. I'm not as snappy as I was a month ago, but how can I still find like a 76 plus meter 14 pound under minimal to no load? If that makes sense. It's kind of a play that we want to do to say like, okay, how can I hold on to a taper and also like, what are those super like loose and rubber bandy gumby feeling throws feel like? Cause you don't really get time to experiment that. Like once I hit the weight room in a couple of weeks, like I'm going to be sore. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to sure. feel that feeling of what does that really relaxed throw feel like? So we might kind of keep training, playing with it for a little bit. Um, but that's that conversation I have to have with my coach because I got back from Tulsa about an hour ago and i'm, <laughs> I'm tired <laughs> yeah for sure for sure yeah. so will you will you, so you'll just throw no lifting maybe up until january then you'll say okay we're going to start this process over again with this program oh, oh no not, not until january i'm just a couple of weeks just a couple I mean, of weeks we'll, okay yeah i'll i'll be hitting the weight room hard <laughs> okay okay pretty okay. soon yeah but it's kind of just a 
you never really get the opportunity to throw when you feel absolutely fresh. You've always yeah. got that piece of the weight room gotcha. that's vital, in my opinion. Like you've always got that piece kind of getting your body to feel a certain way. What does it feel like if if that's not even in the picture and you're just throwing hammer? What does that do to the throw? How do you do you start feeling it in different ways? I mean, that's kind of a question we were curious about. And Mitch Krauser, Ryan's dad. Yeah, is a big try really pushing me to try to do that because he when he threw he threw professionally, of course, um, he said he had one season where he tore his adductor near the end of the year. And so he couldn't squat. He couldn't really do anything that he wanted to do. And as soon as it came back, he he, he felt healthy enough to throw, but he couldn't put any weight on the bar. So he just threw and threw and threw. And he said he just started to feel the throw much more relaxed and rhythmic instead of this like punch, like I just got to jam it out there, started to really flow really well. And um, he made, said he made a huge amount of improvement. It was the first time he threw like 66 meters was at a meet at the end of that summer on no training whatsoever. Um, there's something to that. I mean, I was in Tulsa today and Andrew Evans has had a recurring foot injury. And so he hasn't squatted in like two months. And he uh -huh. threw 65, 40 something today with oh, wow. like no wind. No wind? No. <laughs> oh, wow. It was nuts. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, like six yeah. six mile an hour right to okay. left. I mean, I, like no wind in Tulsa. I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a mean wind there in like April and May, but this time of year, it, it's, it's pretty average. Yeah. Um, gotcha. But yeah, I mean, there's something to that. I mean, maybe there's something there that I could learn while I still have, um, while I'm healthy, just kind of, gotcha. and, and frankly, Ryan's got another, it's July 23rd. Ryan's got another month and a half of his season. So it might help to just kind of extend that because it's, I mean, if I make an Olympic team next year, I'm going to be training this long. So yeah, you kind of got to like get your body used to that. If you think yeah. about it, you don't want next year to be like the first time I've ever trained into August. You know what I mean? Um, cause it's a, there's some, there, that's a different thing. I mean, that's a long season. How do you approach that? How do you physically get through that without getting injured? All those things, you know, you can learn a little bit in a couple of weeks, I think. You, you I feel like I'm kind of talking myself into it. We'll see. I'm going to talk. To <laughs> well, we're going to encourage you <laughs> later. Do you set the goal and say, okay, I feel like 78 meters will be on the team. Um, I don't necessarily look at it like that. Um, okay. I got to look at like what I'm able to do. Gotcha. Of course, I think, you know, there will come a time where I feel like I'm ready to throw 78 meters. I wouldn't be doing that if, yeah. if that weren't part of my, you know, vision for what I'm trying to accomplish. But like I said earlier, it's the small goals for me. You don't get from 74 to 78 by just thinking time to throw 78. Yeah. Yeah. You got to throw 75 and 76 and 77. So you know, we'll see what kind of shape I'm in next year. Um, I'm excited, of course, and I want to try to throw 78. I mean, I'm going to train for that. Yeah. But, you know, got to get the 18 out of a couple of meters. I need to get more consistent throwing the 16 over 73 in training. I need a light ball over 80 meters. Like there are things like that that are going to kind of set me up to do that. And then it's just competing at the end of the day. It's um, having confidence that I'm capable of it being relaxed enough and clear-minded enough to just let that kind of thing happen because throwing far frankly doesn't happen by making it happen by no. making it happen it's by letting it happen great point and it goes with any event that's the long jump that's spring fast if you're just trying to punch the shot as hard as you can it might not go as far as it's able to go if you were to move properly and, and do the things that you have to do to kind of I guess, like, what's the word for it? You have to, like, set yourself up for it, but you can't just make it happen. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 that sounds right. I don't know. Yeah. My brain's a little fuzzy. I competed this morning. I've had two monsters today. I'm just kind of... <laughs> you're, you're tired. We're gonna, tired. We're, we're running yeah. No, I'm all right. I'm having fun. Welcome back, track people. This is Brandon, owner of fourthrows.com. We're a fast and growing track and field company that specializes in the throws. With our speed shipping, implement warranties, 
and rock bottom prices on javelins, discuses, shot puts, and hammers. Call us up today to talk directly to one of the owners at fourthrows.com. Hey, so I know you started throws Northwest Arkansas. How's that going? Oh, yeah. Are you doing some doing some lessons? You still working with a couple shot putters? Yeah, I, I do. I do lessons in Northwest Arkansas. Um, there's there's not a whole lot of um, there are a couple of coaches up here that know what they're doing, but for the most part, a lot of these coaches are, I mean, I went to a handful of meets this year at the high schools and there'd be like eight to 10 schools throwing in it and only like two throws I coaches think. there. Yeah. And um, I kind of, of course, this is, it's been a lot, it's been a lot of fun. I met a few kids last summer that um, I had the privilege of coaching for the year. Um, one of them is heading to, Oregon right now to throw at the junior Olympics in the hammer. He's a, he's a interesting cat. It's his second meet ever in the hammer. And he said, I should go to Eugene, Oregon. (laughs) I was like, what age group? Oh gosh. He just turned 16. Okay. 15 to 16. Yeah. All right. I'm heading up there. You're heading up there. Yeah. I'm heading up there on Wednesday. So (laughs) he's going to need some help. Just yeah, we have calm. a girl throwing hammer tomorrow. Then my my two boys will throw shot and disc. Well, she'll throw all three during the week. So awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I've got him. I, I coached coached uh, Brooks Young um, to a state championship in the shot. Okay. And he's heading to BYU next year. Um, so he's, throw? we're real excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good. So got a little little tight knit group, just a handful of kids, and then there's a few. I'm sure y'all know how it goes. Like. You'll coach them a couple times and then they kind of disappear. So I'm hoping that next season we can get a little more consistent. Um, maybe I need a few more um, this fall and I can build my group a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I've got a little free time in the evenings. It's Good. really fun and really rewarding to give back to these kids because I didn't have a coach in high school. And yeah. I'm sure there's so many kids that that want to learn how to throw, but they just don't know either where to start or where to go with it. They're just kind of lost in paralysis by analysis so just hopeful i hope that i'm helping them and and they seem to have a lot of fun so for sure so you have that instagram uh throws northwest right yeah i made the i made the account and i never did anything with it so you just you can you can um dm me okay Um, all right just making sure I, i i hope i still have the password to that yeah i made the account and made a logo and then that never ended up (laughs) <laughs> posting anything to it. Well, I started to ask um, if you had a website, but I probably I figured you didn't. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it was just a couple of kids, and I wanted, you know, if the group grew to to something, I wanted to have like a club or something eventually. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I kind of take it week by week and uh, try to help out where I can. Um, sure, man. Not that just hammer, cool. of course. Shot, shot, and discus primarily. That's what that hammer's not really an event here. Um, in Arkansas, so shot and disc. Yeah, you know, I got. I know a thing or two about a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> you you so, know a plenty to help those guys. So have you picked up a sixteen and thrown? Have you picked a up a shot? 16? Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. So I threw. I didn't throw shot in high school, but yeah. I did my first two seasons at Arkansas. I threw 52 feet in the glide, and around then was like. Our other guys were kind of taken off. They started throwing like 57, 58. And I was like, maybe this isn't for me. Um, but yeah, last, what year was it? It was like in 20, year, in, 20, in, 20, in 2020, I threw in a comp because with, with um, World Athletics and USATF um, regulations, you need a certain number of people in a comp to make it a legal comp. And in 2020, I threw in a comp with Ryan because it was a you know, pandemic. There wasn't anybody traveling. So yeah. we, we, we got a comp together in Atlanta and I threw the shot and I threw a stand throw 15.4 meters. It was like 50, 51 high, something like that. Oh, wow. So I still got that in the tank. Yeah. If anybody is looking for a comp, stand throw comp, <laughs> non shot putter stand throw comp. Yeah, <laughs> I could probably take that home. You're in. Sign you well, up. I was wondering with all these big your periodization and your training and stuff and your strength, I'm thinking, dang, he might go 18 meters. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, give me a few weeks of training. I got that in the tank. Yeah, Easy. Sure. 
Easy. <laughs> Wait, I, I have Gosh, I'll probably break my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, well, I have two more questions, but we can not do. Okay, so you talked a little bit about what your day looks like, right, as a professional thrower. So, do you have a job? Yeah. yeah Does like, he have a day job? Like, I do. You think, like, well, they just go out and throw a little bit, and, you know, and then that's it. I mean, yeah, you lift weights, you do all this. So, what beyond your job because you have a real job because you're not bringing in the millions right as, as not a quite professional thrower, not quite yet so what does that day look like like you don't have to tell me your specific lifts but how many hours a day do you throw how do you lift you to worry about you your day job all that kind of uh -huh. stuff like, what does a day in yeah the it's kind of look like it kind of varies on the day um so i throw four days a week okay. practices are about two hours um, and that's, you know, warm up, drilling, throwing, and then some cool down, like uh, unilateral stuff. So about two hours throwing. And then I lift. We lift for a long time because Ryan and I like to take good rest breaks. Um, so usually I, I throw, I eat lunch. And then so my, my job is I'm a videographer and social media manager for a company called Trackwired run by one of our coaches at the University of Arkansas. Yeah. So I, I run all their accounts and I do all the video and graphics design for them. So that kind of takes up a chunk of the day and I go over to Ryan's and then we sit around. Oh, typically, is that's around when he starts throwing. So I'll watch him practice pretty much. I, I'm probably at three out of four of his practices out of the week. So I watch him throw. That's about another two hours. And we go inside, we eat, we hang out for a little bit. Kind of He rests and digests his food and then we go lift. And then I lift, you know, it depends on what we're doing, what time of year, like if it's at the end of the season, like we're in right now, my lifts take an hour, but if it's in the fall and we're pulling and squatting and doing RDLs and doing lunges and doing this, that, and this, and that, it can take like close to three hours some days. But yeah, just a lot of throwing, a lot of lifting, working during my spare time, doing some fishing with Ryan on the weekends. <laughs> oh, you picked up fishing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good time. We uh, so, so last time on the podcast when we had you on, you hadn't you hadn't jumped into the fishing world yet. I had, I guess that yeah, that would have been yeah. I guess in twenty twenty one, I started fishing a lot more with Ryan. Um, like I don't have my own boat or anything. Um, <laughs> that's the that's the key is like if you want to get into fishing, find a friend that has a boat. <laughs> you know, you so go. they can do all that. They can get all the maintenance done on it. You just need to show up on time. And, <laughs> yeah. and help out where you can. There so, yeah, we go, go fishing quite a bit around here. Um, north of the Arkansas is just littered with lakes and rivers. Um, plus, you got Oklahoma. I mean, right, we're 40 miles from Oklahoma. You got a lot out there in East Oklahoma. Same as Southern Missouri and Kansas. So we kind of pop around all over the place and did a little fly fishing last summer in Oregon with him. That was a lot of fun. Nice. Um, looking to get more learn more about that because that's hard but it's 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 very fun um yeah we'll see maybe this summer when we got some time off we can practice that yeah so when you try going back to so when you lift and you're lifting those three hours you're probably not getting home in in bed until 11 o'clock right and that's is that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's and yeah, you're I mean, up at six or seven and that's, that's not oh no i mean i'm up at i'm up late but i sleep in um, and that's just kind of how the thing has worked out. Cause of course, yeah. like a huge part of recovering is sleeping. Sleep, so I yeah. try to get at least, at least eight and a half hours a night, um, every night, no matter what, if I got to sleep in a little bit, so be it. Um, so I get my full recovery and I get a breakfast. We practice most days, either at 10 or 11 mm. and I'm not up till 11 o'clock at night, every night. I mean, we don't pair our throwing and lifting every day. So okay. like Monday and Friday are doubles. And then the rest of the week is usually just like one workout a day. So those days I'm not burning the midnight oil. I mean, I'm done by four or five o'clock, but yeah, those Mondays and Fridays typically are late night. Sometimes we, wow. we, we mess around too much and watch too much Netflix or something. And it's like, Oh, it's nine o'clock. We should lift now. <laughs> Oops. Whoops. Yeah. And, uh, what was my question? <laughs> I had a really good, I had a really good question. 
Uh, so when I'm not the expert in all the numbers and all the distances like he is, I don't study who all the best throwers are, but I do know that Americans hammer has not been right. We're not known for our male hammer throwers in the U S maybe had some good ones, but what, what does it, what would it take? What do you think in your opinion, does it take to continue to have men's hammer in the U S just move up those ranks in the world rankings? Yeah, I think, I think it's in a good place right now. I mean, we haven't seen a guy compete at the world stage at the highest level since like Lance Steele. Kibway made some finals. Kibway is an amazing thrower. Um, then there was a kind of a bit of a gap. There were some great throwers in between there, but you know, no, nobody throwing 80 meters, but you know, we had three guys in the Olympic final last, uh, two years ago. Um, you know, but it's that small little bump to go from like getting like, I don't know what places Rudy, Daniel and Alex got, but um, to make that top three and get a medal. I mean, it's a serious, that's a serious, you know, thing. Um, and you're competing against cats from Poland and Norway and France that have been throwing since they were 10 years old. Um, I think just with time, we'll see that American Hammer is really going to catch up to them. As, as the training age of those guys catches up, as guys like me get older and get more experienced, the main, the main thing is um, getting experience in Europe is mm. huge. I mean, guys talk about that a lot. Like Americans don't get to go to Europe as much to practice. Like, what does it feel like to throw with jet lag? And like, I'm staying in a hotel and I don't speak the language and I don't know what to eat and they don't have much protein here. Like, what do I do? Um, nothing is fried. How am I going to, where do I get a cheeseburger? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you get really thrown off of your like norm when you go overseas. And I haven't experienced that furthest I've been is to Canada to throw. Yeah. And that was a challenge in and of itself to make sure I had the right groceries and stuff and keeping up with my water intake and sleeping enough. Um, I can't imagine what it's like to go to Czech, like Czech Republic or to Hungary or to Poland or to France or the UK. That's something I hope to get experience in next season. Um, but as these guys are getting older, I mean, we saw Rudy, Rudy's been over to Europe twice this year. I think both trips, he's thrown over 78 meters. So he's on, he's on the right track I and mean, Rudy's really killing it. What a, what a guy. Great dude. Um, so as like a lot of those guys will keep track of their PR and then their European PR. And it's, I mean, it's, it's for real. I mean, it's a different, completely different mindset you're in when you're over there. I and mean, it's a eight hour flight. Your time zones are all messed up. You don't know when to go to bed. You don't know when to wake up. Um, you've got to keep track of like bus schedules and trains and all kinds of yeah. stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a challenge that I hope I get the experience to, uh, take on next season or the season after that but yeah i think american hammers on the right track um it's a really really deep field i mean i can't who was it um somebody told me last year they hadn't seen me in a while and they were like man you picked a heck of a time to be a professional hammer thrower <laughs> i said yeah because you think back in 2016 um back when the the olympic standard was 76 I, I, I think we had one guy hit that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Rudy, I believe. And um, it took like 75 meters to make the team. And, you know, look at, look at 2021, 2022. Like, this year was a bit of a down year, but that's expected. I mean, everyone's, it's been a long push since the last Olympics and everyone's going to kind of revamp for next season. But you got like six, seven guys that have the potential to throw in that range next season. Um, and that kind of like, competition in the same way that like, you know, Joe and Ryan knocking heads is pushing the shot world record up. When you get that level of competition, um, people come, come out of it. Like you're going to get some outliers. And we saw that with Rudy. I mean, throwing the American record in 2021, Daniel Hall hitting 80 meters last year, Alex being a 78 meter guy, Sean throwing, I think Sean threw 79 meters. Like, there's some crazy distances going on yeah. that, that, that Americans haven't seen in a long time, but it's just going to take those guys and hopefully myself kind of pushing into that bottom end to lift the guys at the top up. Of course, like I would love to pass them, but it's going to be a dogfight next year for real. I mean, you got the, the three amigos 
Rudy, Daniel, and Alex that have gone to like every world championship and Olympics for a millennium, it feels like. Yeah. And then you got Sean, who's always right there. You never know if he's going to be on during the day. He can show up at those 79 meters and shock some people. Brock Eager this year threw amazing. Um, Jordan Geist is is brushing up on 76 meters. You got me, who like who could throw 86 meters on any given day. <laughs> there you um, go. Okay. You will, man. I'm missing some names, but yeah, like the, the crew we got is amazing, and they're great yeah. guys. We're all friends. Like we share Airbnbs together all over the country. Like we share rental cars. We're we're homies. So um, no one's no one's got like a tough ego to get along with. I'm excited for anybody. Whether it's me going to the Olympics next year or three other guys, like I'm happy that I get to be a part of it. I hope it's me. Um, I'm going to try like H-E double ho hockey sticks yeah, to yeah. make that yeah. team. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's been a really fun journey and I hope it continues on. I stay healthy and just keep moving that mark. Um, man, like uh, it's crazy. A couple of years ago, I was throwing 67 meters. And now I'm throwing in the 74s. It's wild. Wow. Dude, it's wild. No, let's go work. No, let's go back. Even in 2015, you threw 50 meters. In 2020. <laughs> no shit. Do you go look at your world rankings? In 2015, yeah. you threw 50, 26. And now in 2023, 74, 56. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit of an improvement. I think if anything, I'm going to end next year with the, like a most improved certificate or something, you know, at like <laughs> athletic banquets, they say, this yes. guy did good. That'll be me. Um, dude, you, what you're doing, like, dude, number one, I, I love you because you're living the dream and I love you too. And you're not caught up in the, the money side of it. And you're letting that be a burden. And I know we all want to make millions of dollars and high financial security but dude, you're finding a way. And yeah. you know, when I saw that you came a Velosa sponsor, man, I was like, look at this dude. He is turning himself into something big time. And I'm just so happy for you, man, because you're living the dream. And a lot of people try to do it. They get frustrated. They have an excuse and they stop. 20 years later, they say, What, like, what if I could have stuck it out? I could have done this. Dude, you're not letting any of that shit get in your way. And I I know my gut tells me in 2024 with the people that's around you and their guidance and you following their lead a little bit, you're going to make that Olympic team. I promise you. Thank you. It means a lot to hear that. I've got a really special group of people around me and people like y'all making me feel good about myself. It, re it really means a lot. I mean, no one, no one told me to go post-collegiate when I graduated. There were like, I mean, I never had any explicit conversations with people about this other than my close circle, but like your 67 meter hammer thrower, like what's, what business do you have going out and trying to compete with guys throwing in the high seventies? But I had that little corner of my brain that thought like, it, you, you've got more here. Like you haven't really figured this out yet. Yeah. And I think I owed it to myself to, you know, see if I could discover that and the credit to all the people around me who helped me kind of see that and, and, make that kind of question in my mind into reality it's it's been really fun um it's funny you mentioned my 50 meter throw that cracks me up because i was talking to coach mo from cal yeah um out in eugene and I, I hadn't met him officially and i went up and shook his hand i said coach mo it's nice to meet you i'm eric solens he said oh i remember you i was like oh yeah it's great to meet you i just don't think we put a face to a name i mean i don't think i've been face to face with you. He said, No, I remember you. You threw at the Stanford invite in 2016. I was like, Oh, yeah, how's that? He's like, Yeah, I remember you because you threw 180 feet and then you celebrated like you just broke the world record. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Look, man, like it's the it's it's the little things like that. <laughs> like you gotta celebrate the victories. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've had, I've had some, bye. <laughs> I've had, no, he was just, it was all good fun. It was very funny. We both laughed about it. And then, uh, um, yeah, I've had great conversations with some, some throwers I've really looked up to like seriously, like legends in the, in the game, um, that have told me that the same thing, like, Hey, like I was in your shoes, you are doing everything right. Like, I wish I could be doing that again. I'm so glad that you're pursuing this, you know, quest and adventure yeah. that I got to be in because it's really special and I don't take it for granted. 
it's 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 a ton of fun. I want more out of it, but you know, at the end of the day, I got to be happy with how far I've come. Just continue on having a good time, working hard, and um, you know, see what happens. You know, at the end of the day, if if I never throw any further again, like look at what I've gotten to do, like multiple world championships. I've been internationally now. Um, I get to work with Ryan Krauser daily, which is nuts. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about it. Um, people remind me of how lucky I am about that all the time, but I just look at him as a buddy at this point. Um, yeah. But it's really, spe- I mean, he's broken the world record multiple times. He's probably going to break it again. Yeah. He's really yeah. changing the expectation of what it means to be a shot putter. Yeah. And, and, and guys are really frustrated with him because they're like, man, I'm throwing 22 meters and this guy's out here throwing 77 I feet. Know. Like what the heck? I know. How do hey, I compete with that? Today. Yeah, he's 23 again today, 23.07 out in London. So, yeah, he's in good shape. Um, He's had a really solid year, kind of getting consistency built with that technique. I mean, like anything, like when you make changes, it's a little frustrating because I know what he's capable of. And when he goes to a meet and throws 22.70, I know from firsthand side-on experience that I'm like, that's a letdown because I know how far you can throw. And I've been there. He's just like anybody else. He just has a PR that's further than everybody else. Yeah. So like, you know, it changes a little bit of the mindset, but at the same day, like at the end of the day, he's just a guy trying to throw PRs. And um, so he's capable of some crazy stuff. I won't go into numbers, but yeah, he's, he's going to throw far. Once he sets up his good peak for world championships, that's when he plans on really starting to like be in that peak fighting shape. So I'm, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm very lucky and very thankful to be a part of that story in the capacity that he's allowed me to be in it's been a ton of fun um yeah. same with all the guys like you know anybody who i've been with shared a, shared a ring with and gotten to train with or learn from or have a conversation over dinner it's so cool like what we do we all know i mean it's super like it's so niche but it's like the coolest thing in the world and i've had the the fortunate you know, circumstances in front of me that have allowed me to be with some really amazing people. So yeah, it's, it's cool. And I think too, because you're not isolating and trying to do this by yourself. That that, helps a lot. Yeah, exactly. And, and exactly with that support and stuff. And I've had conversations with like Mike Stoltz and some other people, you know, and he kind of followed the guide of Randy Barnes and then their coach, you know, and Stolz no, is a legend. I, wa- I watched him glide. That's how I learned how to glide. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but there was that support system of, of Barnes trying to sh- pull Stoltz through there and show him how to do it. And you had to coach. And it was all like this three headed monster of getting it. And I kind of see that, you know, with you and Ryan and, and Newell and what y'all are doing, man, is just, is just unbelievable. As much as he's making you better, yeah. you're making him better as well. Um, and just keep doing what y'all are doing and you keep growing the sports because we're you're growing the sport of the hammer throw just by coming out of the Texas and people looking up to you and say, hey, I'm from Texas and I throw the hammer. Mm-hmm. Half the people don't know what that are, but the other half that do will be like, dude, I want to be like him. Yeah, and, I mean, that's proof in and of itself that yeah. the sport is growing. So we're doing something right. We just got to keep at it, keep getting kids excited about it. And we'll keep trying to throw far and hopefully inspire some people and and y'all are on the ground floor putting in that work with them. So that's that's giving them that opportunity. It's so special. Awesome. All right, brother. Appreciate it, man. Dude, we're going to let you get to bed. <laughs> hey, sun's, sun's still out. I'm going to yeah. have a nice meal, hang out for a little bit. No, I appreciate yeah. it, guys. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Congrats on your success. And, uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Dude, keep it up. 78 meters next year. 24. Yeah. Let's do it. Thank you all. No, thank you. Have a good one. I, I just... You talk about dreams and living your dreams and accomplishing stuff. Eric Solons is 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 that purest example. And I we I threw this out earlier. I want to throw these numbers out there. 2015, he threw 50 meters. 2016, he threw 56, 56, 57 meters. 2022, 2021, he threw 72 meters. Of course, in 2023, 74, 56. And I just. That is amazing in itself that the perseverance, the will to succeed, the mental approach, and always being in that positive rock mind frame of keep going and keep going and just living it and don't letting the obstacles get in front of you, no matter how big the obstacle is. And, and that's what we love about him. God has a plan for Eric Sullins. 
and he's put him in the right situation to go out and succeed, of course. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to make things happen in 2024. Um, and it just, just with any kid listening to this, any kid can go out and achieve the same things. And that's that's what we want out of this this episode is whatever your dream is, whatever the obstacles it is, just don't give up. Is keep fighting every day, one day at a time, one minute at it, and during that day to live your dreams and good things will happen. And then it might take eight years, it might take 10 years, but if there's a will and a way, and, and you know, you believe in yourself and you know, you have people around you that's going to lift you up and that's going to, you know, have people to talk to and chat with and listen, you know. Then, then you can do anything you, you want to in life. And Derek L. Eric's doing that. To that, you know, he talked about ch- making changes in his throw. And some days are going to be bad at practice, but you have to pick the little thing that's good. You yeah. practice it every day so you can walk away feeling good about something that you did. It took him, what, 25 months mm-hmm. to get back to where he did, but to make the changes. So now, those 25 months are going to be worth it because now he was continuously that progression. Yeah. So you can't give up and go back. Sure. Sure. All right. We want to thank our sponsor, Texas Track and Field Coaches Association, um, TTFCA.org. Go look at all the outdoor meets for next year, starting to be posted, the winter clinic in January. Um, Always great information there. Orthros.com, follow the implements across for I use the code Talking Throws 10 to get 10% off. Porta Circle, Porta Dash Circle, um, make throwing more accessible. Um, if your you know, summer's getting to a close and if you need to do some training indoors, you need to get you a port circle um, Ready Up Athletic Development, if you're in the Austin area, readyupad.com. Call Zach Phillips, get you um, some workout programs. Also, remember he has his basic throw strength program on the Train Heroic website. And if you'll use the code GROWS10, you can get 20% off of that. Um, Zach's doing some great things. And Big Frogs of Colleyville, shout out to them for all of our printing needs. Um, you can go check them out at colleyville at bigfrog.com. Hello, Talking Throws, Texas podcasters. I'm Bruce Caldwell. I'm here today to introduce the Fiber Sport Discus. Yes, many of you thought I only made great vaulting poles. I have been bringing quality discuses to the thrower's hands for over 40 years. First as Cantabrian USA representative, then for the past 10 years as the Nelco discus distributor. I introduced the yellow plated discus for the plastic's best durability. If your fiber sport discus breaks, we replace it. Our studies have reached into the science of using a wind tunnel and adding microchips to the discus to find the spin, the gravity, the flight stability of the discus. We have found it's not about rim weight anymore. It's more about creating a balanced stability to allow the discus to fly and surf the wind. Our new fiber sport discus is made to be selected to fit your needs, no matter the weather, no matter the conditions. Check out our discus selection guide at fibersportdiscus.com and find a dealer in your area that sells our fine product. Thank you, Jason and Janelle, for allowing me to talk with your listeners on Talk and Throws Texas Style. I'm the Throne Factory. We're finishing up our summer season. I guess by the time this comes out, we will have kids who have just completed at the junior, competed the junior Olympics in Oregon and in Iowa. Um, but so if you did some summer track and you want to get involved in that next year, reach out to us. Do some fall training, um, weightlifting, pick up an implement, learn how to throw. It would be awesome. And lifting DFW. Lifting DFW. Go check out that website, liftingdfw.com. If you need any uh, sport-related performance training, uh, body weight reduction, whatever you need, um, we'll get you taken care of. Go to liftingdfw.com. Maggie. Maggie was on our podcast. Oh, oh, oh. Maggie was once on the podcast as a oh gosh, as a puppy. Maggie. Maggie is not a puppy anymore. Nope, okay. she's not. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi